Hello guys, how's it going? Screezilla here, I hope you're all well. So, World War II Chronicles, Africa, Landing of the Allies, the event that the Matilda was made for. Let us take her out into the desert, the Queen of the Desert shall ride again. Let's show those Germans what British engineering can do, the amazing tank that is the Matilda. So I've done a video on the Matilda before, a bit of the history and stuff like that. It, it's it's a great tank. It's a terrible tank, but it's a great tank. At when you're max BR in it, at 3.0, it's pretty much invulnerable. It's very hard to kill. It's also got the 40 pounder gun, which has got a ridiculously quick reload. You just fire shells so quickly downside to that is it's only a 40 pounder so it's got the penetration of a nine millimeter you have solid shot APCR and uh, yeah they're good sometimes when they work when you get lucky the well the APT um, it's got some decent penetration values to it, 80 millimetres, sort of around about 100 metres, 60 millimetres at 500 metres, you know, it's a decent penetration value. Um, of course, it's one of those things, you could take out the slightly lighter shot, which has got better fragmentation to it, but not as much penetration. Um, I tend to use the shot a little bit more because I find the fragmentation's a little bit better, but it's always good to take out a few of the heavy shots as well. Okay, let's take this out. Take her out into the dunes. With the speed of a disabled snail, we move across the desert in this beautiful machine. Now, the Matilda is an interesting tank because it was originally... The Matilda Mark I was actually a very light tank. Very different to what you see here. Uh, the Mark II is very different to a real Matilda. Well, the first Matilda, let's say. So it does make it very... It, it, it's an interesting tank to look at. And there were quite a few variants of the Matilda as well. It was quite a successful tank. And it did mean, it, it sort of provoked Hitler into getting bigger guns on his tanks, things like that. They needed more arm piercing because the Matilda was, well, really quite strong at the front. You wouldn't believe it when playing War Thunder because everything penetrates you, but the Matilda has got some really good armour on it. It's a breakthrough tank. So what that means is this is not meant to go fast. It's not a speed demon tank. It's not a fast tank. It's not designed to fly across the battlefield. But it's designed to go with the troops. The troops walk behind it and you break through the enemy lines. It's sort of the World War One way of advancing. And that's what the Matilda was made for. Now one of the great things about the Matilda is the depression of the gun. As you can see here, you can just lean over the top of a hill and you've got amazing depression. That's a dead tank. Good job. Good job, Scree. Uh, but you've got fantastic depression, so you can really go hold down in this tank. Which you kind of need to do, because the lower glacius is, um, is a prime target. It's one of your big weak spots. No, I'm very much in the open here, so not in the best spot. If an anti-tank gun comes at me, I'm going to be in some serious trouble. But we're going to move around here and try and flank some people if we get the chance to. So the Matilda's not exactly a tank known for its speed. and. Honestly, in War Thunder, it's a tank that's very neglected. Um, because it's of its tier, it's facing tanks that 
were made a long time after it. They were made to counteract it, basically. Now, as I said, when you're max BR, you're facing the tanks that it would face on the battlefield, and that's when the Matilda comes in really strong, because it's very durable and it takes a lot of hits to kill it. Of course, one of the big flaws is the fact that you've got three of your crew in the turret. So one penetration of the turret with anything that's explosive, any explosive filler, you are absolutely doomed. So you've got to be really careful of basically people penning your turret. And that's one of the, the down points for the Matilda. Because although it has some great armour on its turret, it is very, very easy to penetrate for some of the bigger German guns. Now as you see there, the big flaw of the Matilda is that um, Armada there. Got the engine on fire. Got the engine on fire. Okay, that's down. That's dangerous. Marder's Mar are dangerous for us. Um, so we've got somebody in there. We've also got the Panzer on the Ridgeline to worry about. And our commander's been wounded through the Capola. Um, so we're going to back down a little bit here. Until we can really start spawning people. Watch out for our side of the planes, of course. Now, we're quite hull down in this position, so it's a goodish spot to be in. But as you see, our Capola is a pretty big weak point on us. And we've got to watch out for our side as well. So we've got a Sherman moving in. I really can't see anybody around. Somebody over there behind that tree. I imagine that's that Sherman we were firing at before. Not Sherman, Panzer. What am I talking about? Um, so yeah, the biggest weak point of this, this tank is its gun, and also the rounds you use. The APCR, the, the a, just general solid shot armor piercing is just awful. And as you see, our armor does nothing there from a shot that really shouldn't have penned. Um, yeah. At that point there, you've got around about 120 millimeters of armor, and that was a good shot, but you have to question War Thunder's physics sometimes. The biggest problem for the Matilda is simply the game itself, because it just, well, it just doesn't work sometimes for armor, which is very frustrating, because the British tanks are not exactly armoured beasts. Uh, sorry, they're not exactly great beasts for shooting things. Now, because your rounds are very, 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 very terrible, and your guns are generally pretty terrible. Not for aiming. For nothing else. than uh, the fact that you just can't penetrate things. And if you do, you do bugger all damage. See here with this sniper up on the ridge line there. We had some good penetrate, some good hits there, but we're not going to penetrate that tank because, well, we just don't have the penetration value, and that's partly to do with the 40 pounder. But one of the main issues is fragmentation doesn't really work in War Thunder. What do I mean by that? Well, fragmentation is when a shell goes into a tank. German tanks were not too bad for it because their armour was a little bit more elastic than some others. Um, a great example is the uh, it's the Czechoslovakian tanks. 
Saying that, I get a really good shot on that panzer there and kill him one time. Um, but basically, the Czechoslovakian tanks, things like that, tended to have very brittle armour. And what would happen is a solid shot would go into them and you would get shrapnel. And that's the thing that would kill the tank crew. Now the other thing is when a tank gets penetrated, the crew gets shaken up as well. And that's something that's not put into War Thunder, which is another big reason why the British tanks suffer so much. I've got a sniper to our right, I reckon. Just took out that Churchill. I imagine he's on that hill somewhere. So we're going to follow suit soon, I'm sure. And explode from nowhere. But we're going to get bombed. Ah, joy. So let's try one last time with the Matilda and try to convince ourselves that it's a good tank. Uh, so, actually, we're going to go up to that spawn. Um, so yeah, one of the big issues is the fact that shrapneling doesn't occur, and also tank, st tank, tank, tank crews don't get shaken. When you have a shell penetrate a tank, now even if it's a solid shot, oh, we've, got, we've got a camper right behind us, brilliant. Thank you, War Thunder. Thank you so much. <sighs> fuck this game. Fuck it, fuck it, fuck it in the arse. Fuck it. Ah, God. So, yeah, so, oh, God, fucking campers, oh, let's return to the hangar, take a deep breath, fuck Gaijin, I'm so fucking over camp, but honest, I, the reason there's not been many videos lately is because there's just been so much camping, and I'm fucking tired of it, like seriously, it's fucking beyond a joke now, anyway, so, where that tank penetrated us from, around about 100 millimeters of armor, he was about 500 meters away. You know, it's, it's plausible. But the thing is, when you've got angled armor, it should bounce more shots, blah, blah, blah. Ah, oh, I give up. I swear, I just fucking give up. Um, so, yeah, the Matilda. Fucking useless in War Thunder. Like all British tanks. Alright, guys, see you later.